Oh yeah, boys. I don't know what's cooler. The blue gauges that you can't really see on video or the 9999 on the odometer. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're back inside the house today. What we're gonna be doing is working on the gauge cluster. If you remember on my last episode, I took this thing apart and I took the needles out. So we've got the needles right here taken apart. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy apart, change some of the backlighting on here. And then we're gonna take the needles apart and replace the LEDs on there. So stay tuned. So if you guys recall in my last video, I showed you guys how to take this thing completely apart. Uh, program the EEPROM to match the mileage on your old cluster. So what I'm gonna do is, is take the needles apart, desolder those. I ordered some right angle LEDs that go into the needles that work for that. And then I ordered some blue PLCC2 LEDs that go for the backlighting. So what I plan to do is leave the white ring around here on both sides. I'm gonna do blue needles. Then I'm gonna do blue screens on the mileage and then on the display screen on this one. If you guys remember that cluster I picked up in El Paso junkyard, right? So this one had burnt out needles and everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop those needles apart and show you guys how to pop those needles real quick here. If you recall from the last video when I showed you how to take all this apart, you can go check that out. So in today's video, we're just gonna concentrate on soldering LEDs. So if you guys remember in the last one, I told you guys you need like a pry tool and something to protect your gauge cluster with. So first thing you gotta do is slide it up to like 30 or 40 miles an hour, probably 40 miles an hour is a good number for you to use. Then you take the tool, you tuck it under, grab it firmly, and then use the pry tool to wedge it up and then just pull. It feels like you're gonna break it. You're not. You need to put that kind of pressure to pop it. Take some finagling to do first couple of times just to get it done, but it'll eventually pop out. So it pops right out. You could probably put a little bit of super glue there to get it back in. Same with the tack. Just put it up to like three. Get the tool wedged in here. And then just pull on it. Pops right out. So it's gonna be the same for the gas. So remember, before you start, make sure you take a picture of where your rest is, which is all the way back. I usually put it right in the middle, so that way I have a, a good gauge there. And these, these don't have any electrical connections on them, so you just pop them straight out. Just be careful, you might break some plastic welds that, that hold the outside on. Let's see, I broke that plastic weld, but you just reassemble it with some super glue later. But it pops out pretty easily, it's just that that outside thing. So you kind of set this aside, reassemble this. I'm about to, like I said, I'm about to glue this back. All right, so I'll put these off to the side. The so first thing we're gonna do, we'll deal with this one that's already kind of cracked on us. I have to re-glue back anyways once I'm done. So this one, you just kind of slide the sides out and just maybe get some tweezers or something and then just cover, take the cover off for now. So you take those out. And then in here, you'll see the board with the LEDs on it back here. So you gotta take that out. And it's attached to a fiber optic right here that lights up this needle. There's no real easy way to take this out. So what you really have to do is desolder those two solders right there that connects to the back two pins here. And then there's two little plastic welds, one right there in the middle and one up here in the corner that you gotta either cut off or melt and then pop the board out and then put it back in. Cause the only other way is trying to pop this plastic piece off, but it's held on by like four of these same plastic welds on the back side. Even if you did that the way they designed these two pins, it goes through the plastic. So it's pretty destructive. So I think the only two ways to take it apart is desoldering those two pins and then and melting those plastic welds. All right, so I've got this all set up on my little soldering stand here so I can actually see and desolder this. If you guys don't already have these tools, I have the link to all these tools down in the description box. I think this whole little stand here is only like six or seven dollars. And I actually got two of them. I got two types. I got this one, the unlighted and the lighted one, just in case. You're gonna need this little solder stand to kind of hold everything so you can work with it. You need the soldering iron and air solder 
You need a solder pump, tweezers and all that. I think the tweezers come with the soldering irons. Those are the kind of the basic tools you'll need for this. Definitely pick this stuff up if you don't already have it. Soldering iron I got a while back. This thing's been a lifesaver for me for doing these projects. Yeah, got it out. One down, three to go. So here's an up close of what it looks like. So we got the board off the two little pins there. I melted those two little plastic welds right there to get the board out. I'm just gonna end up probably just, you know, super gluing that back on when I'm done. If uh, you really wanna hold it or you really destroy yours, you can always use a little bit of epoxy also. So I ordered these, I believe they're 1206 right angle LEDs. And they're actually a little bit bigger than the ones that come on here, but they still fit on the pad pretty well and they're a lot easier to solder. The ones I got have a little dome on them, which means that you gotta solder them a little bit below the board so it actually clears the lens and the diffuser so you don't uh, block it. Some people just use regular 1206 LEDs and they turn it sideways and they solder it on, but the right angle ones have a little flat side so it's a little bit easier to lay down onto the pad. You could try the normal ones if you can't get these. Uh, these are kind of expensive. They were like 20 for six bucks versus like a hundred for five or six bucks of the regular ones. So I just tested the cathode and the anode and it looks like the cathode, which is the negative side, is on the left in this orientation right here. When you flip it over, it's also on the left. Just make sure you have your multimeter and check the direction before you start soldering. The LEDs are so small that it's kind of hard to tell which side is the anode or the cathode either. So make sure you test those before you get them on too. I got this thing soldered back in pretty well. Got a nice tight seal. Tested all the contacts with the multimeter and everything works. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together now. So got everything re-soldered back together. Pretty easy just to clean up those two little spots where you melted the plastic, pop it back on, and then solder the two joints back in. The two joints are good enough to hold, but I ended up just putting a little bit of super glue just for good measure. I'm gonna reassemble these babies, test them on the cluster, and move on to the backlighting.
All right, so here's the open board. I'm gonna go ahead and do the two right here on either side for the gas needle blue. I'm gonna do the LCD down here for the mileage blue. I'm gonna do the LCD up here blue. And then I'm gonna do the little light over here, which is the sport light blue. Everything else I'm gonna just leave white. So I'm gonna start off by desoldering everything. So we'll just go ahead and just lightly go over it. Don't heat the areas too much because it is close to other components here. These components, so you gotta be careful with the, the hot iron. I think I might have to use the regular iron on those just because I don't have enough room. Yeah, I don't want to melt any of the stuff. I'm already scorching the stuff, so it's not gonna be good. These are big enough LEDs where you really don't need the hot iron. Just heat up the pad, clean it up a little bit after you're done, and then pull it off. I should switch the tips on these to the bigger, wider tip. These PLCC2 LEDs are pretty easy to solder. Just look for the little slit on the corner, which is the line side. This board shows the direction, so that's the direction of the arrow. Heat up the pad, lay your LED on there and heat up the other pad just to get it to stick and then you get some more solder after this once it sticks. Make sure it gets a good hold. So I'm just gonna use the existing solder for now just to let it get on here and then I'll come back around with the new solder. So got this thing all soldered up. I checked all the contacts using my multimeter just to make sure the LEDs lit up so everything is good now. The only thing that's suspect is this LED right here. It lights up pretty dim. I tried like two or three LEDs there so I think something is drawing the current right there when you test it with the multimeter. So when it runs fully, it should be fine, but we'll see when we test this out. But overall, pretty easy soldering job with these bigger LEDs. So I was able to put the needles back in as close as I could. I pushed them all the way back to rest to make sure that they're in the right position. So everything looks good. The speed looks like it's around zero. The tack is at zero. So I'm gonna plug it up now and see how this baby lights up. All right, got the bench tester plugged up. Gotta plug the power in. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks good as hell. Turn off the lights and see how this looks. Man, the camera doesn't do this thing justice. I'm amazed how well the needles match. I was thinking they were gonna be a little bit more mismatched, but they match pretty dang good. And just like, yeah, up here, it looks white on camera, but this thing looks really good in real life. A very deep royal blue. I'll show an iPhone picture. Maybe the iPhone catches better color than this camera. This is definitely hard to catch the blue on camera, but you gotta see this thing in real life to really appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and do that second cluster off camera and I'll show you guys the results. So the combination blue and white turned out really good on this cluster. As you can tell on the outsides, it's kind of blue. It's hard to see on camera, but in real life, this looks just as good as the other ones in that deep royal blue. See down the center here, I just left the white on here. It looks blue, but in real life, it's just like the stock white. 
On my other gauge, I did this area white by accident. I did the top and the bottom with the blue, but the center, I forgot there was one LED on the side here that did the white, but it matches the two sides, so that's fine. All right, we're back in the car now. So if you guys remember on the last video, I showed you guys about putting this tape so we don't scratch the screen while we're trying to put it back in. So we'll go ahead and install it right now and see how this baby looks. Got this thing plugged up all in the car. As you can see, all the lights are working properly. It's so hard to catch this blue on camera, but in real life, this thing looks awesome. I mean, like I said, it's a really deep royal blue, except on camera, the white balance just washes it all out and makes it all white, but in real life, this looks really freaking cool as hell. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this video. Uh, as you can see, that needle repair and the blue LEDs turned out pretty dang good. I mean, the photos don't do it any justice. I can't wait to see how it looks when I'm driving and at night. And uh, that other one, the all blue one, I'm probably going to end up selling that on eBay or one of these forums for anybody that wants it. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel to stay on top of all my DIY videos and all my other projects, videos go ahead and subscribe to your channel also hit me up on Instagram I usually try to post these finished projects when I'm done on Instagram and thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time